Welcome to Becoming an Examining Attorney at the USPTO event. My name is Sandra Robinson, and I am the Division Chief in the Office of Human Resources Workforce Employment Division, and I will be moderating today's webinar. This one hour information session will tell you everything you need to know about what the role of a trademark examining attorney is and its required qualifications, how this role supports the USPTO's mission to protect intellectual property, and why employees consider the USPTO a best place to work. So let's jump right in. I'm joined today by four members of the Trademarks legal team. First, we have David Miller. He has been with the USPTO for 16 years and is currently a managing attorney. His favorite part about working in trademarks is helping applicants register their trademarks and provide an excellent customer service to all. We also have Liz Jackson, a managing attorney that has been with the agency for 10 years. She loves seeing trademarks that she has worked on out in the marketplace. Robin Mittler is also joining us as an acting managing attorney of trademarks. She has been with the USPTO for over 16 years, 11 of them as a trademark examiner. Her favorite part about working in trademarks is interacting with her wonderful coworkers. Lastly, we'd like to introduce Kimberly Fry. She has been with the agency for 21 years and is currently a senior attorney. She enjoys collegial atmosphere in trademarks and the service aspects of working with the public and helping applicants through what can be a complicated process. David and Liz will be walking you through our presentation and Robin and Kimberly are here to share their personal stories of professional success as trademark examining attorneys at the USPTO. After the presentations, I will discuss the roles we're hiring to fill in detail, the qualifications, as well as how and specifically where to apply before we begin taking questions. To start things off, we actually have a question for you. So first we are going to start with uh, David Miller. Thank you, Sandy. I appreciate all of you joining us today to learn a little bit about the examining attorney position at the US Patent and Trademark Office. I wanted to start with the mission statement of the USPTO, uh, just to give you an idea of, of where we're coming from. Um, so the mission of the Patent and Trademark Office is to foster innovation, competitiveness, and economic growth domestically and abroad by providing high quality and timely examination of patent and trademark applications, guiding domestic and international intellectual property or IP policy, and delivering IP information and education worldwide. And during today's presentation, we're going to focus obviously on the high quality and timely examination of trademark applications, because that is really the core business of what we do in the trademarks business unit here at the PTO. So the slide you see on your screen now, registering America's success, we like to think of that as our motto. Um, and the URL, the link on that page, as along with the QR code that appears, that's a direct link to our Become a Trademark Examining Attorney website. It's hosted on the USPTO.gov uh, website. You can access it by going to USPTO.gov and clicking on the jobs link. Uh, but I wanna mention it here because the majority of the information and content that we're going to discuss today is available on that website. So in the event that you might have a question that is not completely answered or that we don't have time, or you would like to learn a little bit more about some of the information that we're going to discuss, I encourage all of you to check out that website. There's a ton of good stuff there, including uh, a link to the current vacancy announcement for the examining attorney position, along with instructions on how to apply. But we'll get to all that um, in the course of the next hour. Uh, so next slide, please. So as a general overview for all employees at the USPTO, these are some of the things um, that we uh, benefit from. First is the competitive salary, uh, the comprehensive set of federal employee benefits, plenty of opportunities for career development, paid training opportunities, flexible work schedules, and a hybrid work environment. And later in the presentation, my colleague Liz Jackson is going to go into a little bit more detail about each of these 
um, benefits for almost all employees here at the PTO. Next slide, please. In terms of the trademark organization itself, it's important to remember that the USPTO is the only place to apply for and receive a US federal trademark registration. We don't really have any competitors. If people are interested in protecting their intellectual property on a nationwide scale, they should come to us and they apply for a federal trademark registration, which gives them certain rights. We are a community of not just attorneys, but also analysts and specialists dedicated to providing high quality customer service, efficiency, and quality in our work product as well. And these are some of the themes that you're going to hear repeated, not just by me, but by my other presenters throughout today's hour. And last but not least, all of our employees share an interest in serving the public good. Next slide, please. So in terms of the trademark organization, we are organized into administrative divisions known as law offices. Currently, there are 30 law offices. The majority of them consist of a managing attorney, like myself, a senior attorney, and about 25 to 28 examining attorneys. And one of the questions that we get frequently is, within those 30 law offices, are there additional subdivisions or is the type of work that the different law offices do um, different or are, is it separate at all? And the answer is no. All examining attorneys review all different types of trademark applications, regardless of the types of goods or services that are identified on the application. Chances are an examining attorney might begin their day with um, one particular type of application and end their day in a completely different industry or good or service identification. Next slide, please. This is our core business, what examining attorneys do. We review trademark applications for compliance with the Lanham Act for the purpose of determining registrability in the United States. Examining attorneys will pull a case to their electronic docket. They'll review the application for legal sufficiency, make sure that it meets all statutory and procedural requirements. And if everything looks good, they can approve the case for publication and future uh, registration. Examining attorneys will research the industries that are identified in each application very thoroughly. They will write decisions or office actions on various statutory and procedural issues and work with applicants to correct any informal defects in applications. Examiners also approve applications for publication and registration, of course. And finally, examining attorneys will draft appeal briefs and represent the USPTO before the Trademark Trial and Appeal Board. And that's something worth mentioning because it doesn't happen very frequently, but if the applicant disagrees with an examining attorney's decision, they have a right to file an appeal with the TTAB. And every now and then, uh, the applicant will request an oral hearing before a three-panel judge, or a three-panel um, TTAB judge panel. And the examining attorney will be expected to appear and argue and represent the USPTO before the TTAB. Next slide, please. Managing and senior attorneys do a little bit different things. Managing attorneys supervise all of the examining attorneys in the law office, as well as the senior attorney. Uh, managers will perform administrative and other management tasks. They'll supervise issues with the Trademark Trial and Appeal Board assist with difficult cases, and serve as a primary contact with other business units within trademarks and the agency. While senior attorneys are the primary trainers and mentors for, and supervisors for new examining attorneys, senior attorneys will also assist with difficult cases and perform management tasks. Next slide, please. The next few slides in the presentation are what we call portrait quotes. These are photographs of actual current examining attorneys and some insight that they have given us into why they like the job or why they like the agency. And the first gentleman that you see is Obizi. And I like how Obizi discusses the focus on not just practicing trademark law, but also serving the public. He emphasizes quality customer service. Uh, the point that Obizi makes about receiving thank yous from applicants, it happens all the time. Uh, particularly with pro se applicants who are not represented by an attorney. Examining attorneys are expected to 
answer any questions, and help guide those applicants through the trademark registration process if the applicant requests help. Um, oftentimes, after the registration process has completed, the applicant will reach back out to the examining attorney just to say thank you, or just to reach out and say, hey, I really appreciated all of the time you spent with me um, in getting this trademark registration. It's a wonderful thing, it's a wonderful feeling, and it's part of our commitment to excellent customer service. Um, next slide, please. This is Kamal. Now, Kamal mentions the challenging nature of the job, and this is something that I alluded to earlier, um, that examining attorneys examine all types of trademark applications. And it's important to remember that every application is different. The job requires examining attorneys to become at least somewhat familiar with all different types of goods and services and industries to ensure that all applicable statutory and procedural issues are raised correctly during examination. Next slide, please. Here's Jacqueline. Jacqueline again emphasizes providing high quality customer service. Um, we strive for excellence in processing trademark applications. Uh, this idea of helping the public, it's a common refrain here as well. Examining attorneys are expected to reach out and communicate with trademark applicants to resolve procedural issues and to answer questions about the examination of their trademark applications. Next slide, please. And finally, here's Cameron. Cameron, I like that Cameron um, talks about the ability to find fun in every application. If someone is curious by nature, that person will enjoy the examining attorney job very much. Um, even though the statutory and procedural issues that present throughout the day might be similar, they will always be dependent on the particular facts and circumstances of each application. Being able to spot those types of issues in an efficient and high quality manner, it's a learned skill and one that we prize very, very highly here at the Patent and Trademark Office. Next slide, please. And now I'm going to turn it over to one of our attorneys, Kimberly Fry, to discuss her journey at the USPTO. Kimberly? Thank you, David. Um, so yes, my name is Kimberly Fry, and I am currently working as a senior attorney, um, which as David mentioned, is kind of most of my job is supporting the examining attorneys in the law office, um, particularly the people who have just come from training. Um, I also spend part of my day helping the manager just with the administrative tasks of running the law office. And then just helping the office on kind of like office wide things, a little bit bigger picture things. But the bulk of my career here, almost 20 years, I spent as an examining attorney. So um, that is more what I would be talking about today. So starting out when I first came to DC, I kept running into people like the patent and trademark office kept coming up in conversation that people were applying here or they had friends who were working here and i talked to some of those people and everybody seemed to generally have positive things to say about it so i thought well okay based on that i'll apply there and you know at the time prior to that i had never heard of the patent and trademark office i did not have any intellectual property background i hadn't taken any classes in ip in law school and, um, you know, honestly, I don't know if I could have told you what a trademark even is, but so for anybody who's thinking, oh, I don't really have the right background um, to work at the trademark office, you know, definitely do not let that deter you because um, I came here knowing absolutely nothing and they did teach me everything that I needed um, to know. So that was really kind of the first couple of years are sort of being in training and getting up to speed and I came into the office. And I thought after a while I realized, yeah, you know, I really like working here also. The people, my coworkers, everybody was very friendly and it was a very collegial environment and it just had like a positive um, vibe. So um, I also liked that even though people were willing to help you, actually doing your work was fully in your control. And so, you know, you could be responsible for your own work and do everything to like your own on your own timeline, your own standards. So that is something that actually had always really suited me about the examining attorney job. 
another thing that I sort of that kind of kept me interested in those first couple of years was knowing that I would eventually be able to work from home, which now, of course, is common. More people are doing that. But, you know, back at this time, I didn't know anybody that worked from home and especially like there was no legal job where you could be like a professional and work from home. So I don't know now why I was so keen on that, but I was. And I started doing that in 2006. And that is also the first year that I signed up to do an Ironman triathlon, which um, during the years that I was doing that, having the flexibility, not just working from home, but just having a flexible schedule was like a huge benefit because I could do things, I could fit the training in around work in a way that actually made sense or that was like the best way instead of having a schedule where, you know, you have a little bit of time in the morning and then you go and you're at the office all day and then you have like a little bit more time to do stuff in the evening. So for me, that was a huge benefit having that flexibility. And, you know, people do all sorts of different things with that flexibility. I know people who are at work like first thing in the morning so they can finish work by the time their kids get home from school. Um, some people maybe are staying up a little later at night or they're just a little slower moving in the morning so they get a later start. Um, another thing that I always used to do <laughs> is maybe take off like in the middle of the day on a Wednesday and like go to the grocery store or run errands or go to the movies. And then I would work on the weekend while like everybody else was at the grocery store or the movies. Um, so that kind of schedule really suited me. And I also just really liked working as an examiner. Uh, like I said, like the nature of the work and sort of that being more independent and then just feeling like you were being of service. And, you know, it, it does kind of sound cliche and it does keep coming up. But I mean, that is really like a huge um, part of the job, at least something that I really enjoyed was, you know, working with the public and particularly like pro state applicants. Getting a trademark is really important to them and they don't really maybe know what they're doing exactly. And so being able to help them, or even if you can't help somebody actually get their mark registered because there's some kind of problem with it, just still having that be like a not totally negative experience that somebody will call and you're actually there and you can actually explain things to them and not like they're just going through some computer menu and like they're on hold forever and they never actually could talk to anybody. So, or working with attorneys, that's a little bit more collaborative. Maybe you're talking, you know, oh, this is what we can do to get this application moving. So I always liked that aspect of just feeling like, you know, you're working with people or working with the public and trying to get these things done. So on the whole, this also was kind of like the time in my career because I really had more experience. I knew more what I was doing that I might have considered at that time. Um, applying for a promotion or trying to do something other than examining, but I just didn't really have an interest in doing that. And at the time, you know, I didn't really feel like I could take on that kind of responsibility and I didn't really want to give up. You know, I didn't want to come back to the office, which at that time those jobs were on campus. But so my career path maybe has been a little bit different from the norm that I spent so many years as an examiner. And, you know, I really kind of intended to spend uh, that I would still be examining and just a few years ago I started mentoring and that I really enjoyed and I just kind of had more time and was sort of at a different phase with work and life. And so that has kind of led me to what I'm doing um, here with my career. And that is sort of the other thing when I look back and see this like career journey that sticks out to me is just that it has been a career. <laughs> And when I first started working here, I don't know that I necessarily intended that this was going to be like a career job. But, you know, you spend the first couple of years just kind of figuring out what you're doing. And then like all of a sudden, you know, I was like working at home with like having great coworkers and being in this positive work environment. And especially compared to so many of my friends that were at jobs that were like they hated their job or they were so stressed out or they're like wasting half their weekend just being like anxious about having to go back to work on Monday. And I just never have felt that here. Like I've never had a day where I just thought, ugh, this job. I mean, you know, there's always ups and downs or you're tired or you, you know, wish the weekend was an extra day. But just having that kind of sense of like just not um 
just not having a good work environment. I've always been happy to work here and I've always felt like, wow, I am so lucky to have this job and to work with these people in this kind of environment. And so somehow <laughs> it's been, you know, 20, 20 years and I'm, and I'm still here. So that is uh, my career journey. Well, thank you for your responses. Now we have Robin. Thank you, Sandy. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Robin Mittler. I am the acting managing attorney for Trademark Law Office 125, which means I'm a brand new manager. Um, and uh, for purposes of this conversation, what's more important is that I examined for 11 years, and that's mostly what I'm going to focus on right now. Um, just a little background about me. Um, I did my undergrad work at Brandeis University, got my law degree from College of William and Mary. And um, at William and Mary, I took one IP class that had about three weeks of trademark law, and that was my only exposure to trademark law before I came here. And I loved it, but I already had a job lined up at an environmental law firm. So I thought, well, I'm never going to see trademark law again. And um, after graduation, I worked at the environmental firm for about a year and a half and said, you know what, environmental law is really boring and I don't want to do this forever. <laughs> so I decided that I also really would prefer a public service career. Um, so I started looking into nonprofits and government jobs. I got a job at the U.S. Court of Appeals for the D.C. Circuit for two years as a staff attorney. Um, and then when my two-year term was up, I came here. Um, I started here in 2006, so it's been about 16 and a half years. Um, and I examined from 2006 until 2018. Um, during my time examining, I did take a couple of breaks where I did other work projects. On um, one of them, I worked for the Trademark Trial and Appeal Board, the TTAB, and in another one, I mentored, um, which meant I helped train our brand new examining attorneys. Um, so I did each of those projects for a few months, and then um, in 2018, um, I became a senior attorney and was a senior attorney up until a, a couple weeks ago, and now my manager um, is doing a work project so I slid into her manager slot for the next year while she's on a work project. So I'm, I'm a new manager now. Um, so that's my, my quick uh, summary of my career journey in a nutshell. Um, but there's a couple of things I hope you take away from it. Um, one, I won't focus on for long because Kimberly already covered it, but you, know, you don't need a lot of trademark knowledge to apply. So please don't let that stop you um, if you're interested in applying. Um, second, we have a really great training program here. Um, it's very in depth. Um, the total training is two years. You get a ton of training. That's very unusual. Um, when I started at the court, I was thrown into an office which had like a ton of shelves with a ton of files on them and my manager said there you go grab a file and get to work and that was my training <laughs> and I had to kind of ask around you know what do I do how do I use our proprietary computer system what do people expect and here you don't have to worry about any of that um, you know there's training that tells you what to do and how and why so by the time you get to examining you know what you're doing um, another thing I hope you take away from that is that there's a ton of opportunity for work projects and details. Um, I'm actually really happy to see in the poll that most of you really want career growth and advancement. There is a ton of hiring from within here. Um, almost everyone here has started out in examining and some people just love examining and do it for 30 or 40 years and, and that's their whole job. Um, some people move on to other departments. You can go into management like I did. Um, there's a policy department, international policy, solicitor's office, quality review. I mean, so many different places that you can go. Um, and there are work projects and details offered in these departments that are usually six to 12 months. So you can try them out, which is what I did at the TTAB and for mentoring. And then obviously there are permanent jobs in a lot of these departments. Um, I think that's really valuable because number one you're learning new skills and you're learning how the examiner job fits into the whole environment but like when I came into the job here my career track because I was coming from the DC circuit was I'm going to examine for a little while I'm going to go to the trademark trial and appeal board I'm going to be an interlocutory attorney there which is similar to the staff attorney position I had at the DC circuit and then I want to be a judge like that was my <laughs> career trajectory in my head so I did the TTAB detail and I thought, you know what? I liked it. It was fun. My judge I worked for was great, but I actually prefer examining. 
And then I had the opposite experience with the mentoring where I agreed to mentor for six months. I totally thought I would hate it, but <laughs> I had a lot of people bugging me to do it. And I said, all right, I'll try it. What's the worst that's going to happen if I hate it? It's only six months. And I ended up loving it and um, was pretty okay at it. So I thought, okay, this is something I want to continue doing. And I signed up for a second mentoring gig. And then that led to my becoming a senior attorney, which, you know, if you had told me five or six years ago, this is what you're going to be doing, I would have said, you're dreaming. <laughs> There's no way. So it's really good to have that opportunity to stretch yourself and challenge yourself and learn new skills and discover what you like. And there's tons of opportunity to do that here. Um, you know, as Kimberly and David had said, I also really like the public service aspect. Um, to me, it's a little bit of a consumer protection um, issue, but you know, you're helping the economy, you're helping individual small business owners. And that's the most rewarding thing. It's just a really positive job. And you don't run across that very often in a legal job. It's a positive environment and um, it makes it a really nice place to work. You know, when I come back from vacation, I don't dread coming back. And this is the first job I've ever had that I can you know, say that about. So it's just, you know, a good environment to work in. Um, I just wanted to mention a couple other things quickly that I enjoy about um, trademarks and especially when I was an exam examiner, as Kimberly said, the schedule is really flexible. Um, opposite of her, I am completely nocturnal. Um, and if you leave me to my own devices, I will go to sleep at 4 a.m. and sleep till about 11 a.m. And that's my normal schedule. And I never ever thought that I would find a legal job that would be okay with that. But no one here really cares when you start there's classroom training for two months so that's 8 30 to 5 but after that you can pretty much work on your own schedule so when i was an examiner i would start at noon every day and i would work till 8 or 9 p.m and that was fine you know my work got done and done well and that was really all that mattered um, another reason the flexible schedule was really important to me, um, my mom lived with me and my husband for 10 years due to some health issues. And if she needed to go to a doctor's appointment, you know, she needed help grocery shopping, she needed whatever, I could take a break in the middle of the day and go help her and then come back and finish my work. And I didn't have to tell anybody, I didn't have to clear it with anybody, nobody cared. I could just do what needed to be done. And it certainly made, you know, caregiving a lot easier. Um, I don't have kids, but for a lot of my friends with kids, it's the same thing, like they can, you know, schedule their work around their kids schedules and that's really great um, and right now we're um, what's new for the past I think it's been in effect maybe a year or two um, you can have multiple work locations so um, you know my my manager last summer decided she wanted to go to California for three months she lives in Virginia so she rented an Airbnb and went to California for three months and just worked from there um, you know if you're back and forth between your place and a significant other's place you can set them both up as work locations if you want to visit Dick's family for an extended visit you can do that um, it makes things really flexible and really really nice um, a couple other things um, are really just the great great people and the supportive environment. I can't stress that enough. I know we're all saying it, but it's true. Um, you know, you start, you have all this training, there's support from your mentors, support from your managers, you meet great people, you bounce questions off them your entire career, you're going to make lifelong friends. Um, I, I think the best proof of that, if you may have noticed when Sandy was introducing us, like all the speakers have been here a really long time. And there's a reason for that. You know, we have a very low attrition rate. Sometimes when people leave, they often come back um, once they've seen what else is out there it's just a really nice work environment um, I have a couple of friends who sort of I say followed me here and then uh, my husband also followed me here there are a lot of trademark couples and trademark families there's some mother sons and some siblings and stuff will work here because the job's really great so you tell other people about it and they they want to work there too and I think that's really a testament to how good the work environment really is that almost everyone here um, you know, either has friends and family that they found out about the job from or gets other people to come because the job is very rewarding. Um, that is my spiel. So thank you very much for listening to me. And, uh, you know, we'll be taking questions in the chat. Thanks. Thank you, Robin. Next is Liz. Yeah, thank you, Sandy. Thanks, Robin, too. You like took all my high points, but uh, it's okay. Well, I think I think these good benefits can't be stressed enough. Um, so I wanted to start. I'm Liz Jackson. I wanted to start with uh, the numerous opportunities for career progression and development throughout trademarks. And as you can see, you can choose to be an examining attorney. Um, I have someone retiring. <laughs> uh, 
almost 35 years doing it and she was happy. Um, or you can do 20 years and switch like Kimberly, 11 and switch like Robin. I actually only examined for four years before I went into management. Um, the path is yours to choose, um, but the examining attorney position is the feeder position generally for any other positions throughout trademarks. Um, so you can move into management like us speaking uh, or policy. Um, outreach, if you want to work with small businesses on the outside and teach them what a trademark is. Um, executive leadership, uh, make the big decisions if you want. Um, there's a lot of paths to consider. And like Robin said, if you don't want to change paths, but you just want to take, you know, taste some other fields, you, we have six month work projects, details um, that you can try at any time. Uh, a lot of people in my office um, love doing a detail in what's called ID class. Um, David mentioned that when you file a trademark application, you have to identify goods and services that you're using it on. Um, our ID class is who decides what, you know, an ID entry is, and they work with other countries and treaties to make sure um, we're all kind of doing similar treatment of goods and services. Uh, we also have continuing legal education training throughout the year. Um, I never have to worry about my bar or CLE requirements. Um, we, in fact, just had one last week that was an industry training on beer, spirits, and hard seltzers, which are all the rage these last few years. Um, it's important for us to stay up to date on industry so we can properly apply trademark law to new and evolving goods and services. Um, next slide, please. We do have a competitive salary, as David mentioned at the beginning. Um, if you have uh, graduated law school but not yet passed the bar, you would apply for a GS-9, um, and that starting salary is $61,947. Um, but if you have been sworn into the bar, then you start as a GS-11, which the starting salary is $74,950. Um, and if you do apply as a as GS-9, the minute you get sworn into the bar, you can become a GS-11. So don't worry about that. Um, and then during the course of the next few years, you will become GS-12. 12, GS 13, and GS 14. And the starting salary for a GS 12 is at 89,834. Um, what I think many examining attorneys in my office really enjoy about this position is that you can make additional money. Um, if you want to produce uh, over and above the number of trademark application reviewing more than what we, we need you to, you can make a, a production bonus every quarter. Um, if you do outstanding quality work, um, make very few mistakes, um, write really well, you can get quality bonuses as well. So it's, it's definitely in your hands to make more money, which is, which is kind of cool. Um, we also sometimes offer overtime, which, you know, we, you can work more now and make more money or compensatory time, work more now and then take that time later and not have to take leave and just not work for that time. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, these are, we are the federal government, so we offer many of the benefits you maybe have heard about. Uh, health insurance, life insurance, long-term care insurance. I got my dental insurance. Um, we also have paid annual and sick leave that accrues while you work here. Um, I also wanted to mention something I've taken advantage of is the paid parental leave, uh, 12 weeks paid leave for paternity, which is great. Um, so I was able to take uh, several months uh, combining paid paternity leave with annual and sick leave when I had my second kid. I was like, should I have another? Just kidding. Not worth it that much, but it does make it make it more possible. Um, we also have great retirement benefits. Uh, we've got the federal employment retirement system, also our thrift saving plan, so you have some money after you retire. Uh, this this next bullet point, a lot of lot of stuff in here that's really good. Um, public transportation subsidies. When I when I used to take the metro to work, I didn't I never had to pay for it. It was wonderful. Um, we have an on-site fitness center, and I'm saying this because I am currently on campus, and behind me is the window. You can see our campus, and the fitness center is just over there, um, which has great classes. Uh, the most affordable gym I can imagine in the area in the DC area. Um, on the other side of me is the daycare in the in the building next to me, and um, I can actually see the playground from my window, which is a, a wonderful benefit. Um, also, the health unit. Uh, we, if you need a flu shot within the next few months, I, I'm going to run down there myself. So, a lot of things that just uh, this we, we do a lot of things well. I think the last thing I wanted to mention is the public service loan forgiveness. That's if you work for the government or a nonprofit for 10 years, you can have your remaining student loans forgiven. Um, so. 
the USPTO is a qualified employer for that program. And I think maybe if you heard at the beginning, I've been here 10 years, which means November this month right here is my last payment. <laughs> and then the rest of my loans get forgiven and there'll be a party. Next slide, please. <laughs> All right, we offer an award-winning telework program. We were one of the first uh, agencies to, to do this. Um, so we allow attorneys to work at home full-time, utilize, I think we heard a lot about the flexible schedules from Kimberly and Robin. Um, you can work 5.30 in the morning or till 10 p.m. at night. Um, also, uh, you can work anywhere in the United States, Alaska and Hawaii and Puerto Rico now too. So live your dreams. <laughs> Uh, and then hybrid work environment. So if you did want to work in, obviously I'm on campus. Uh, David comes on campus sometimes too. Um, if you wanted to come on, on campus full time, you would have a dedicated office. If not, you can do um, hybrid where you work from home sometimes and on campus sometimes. A lot of freedom. Uh, next slide, please. <laughs> This was also mentioned, no experience in trademark law is required to join the trademark office. Um, as Robin mentioned, you have eight weeks of classroom, which is now a virtual classroom. It used to be um, in person, but now it's a virtual. And then after that classroom training, you will work one on one with a mentor for the first two years with gr gradual independence. Um, but it's nice. You always have that mentor that you're working with. Uh, next slide, please. Oh, I should say, and at the end of that two years, you will be a trademark legal expert. Uh, lastly, the, the student program. So we have um, the trademark law student extern program where you can work in trademarks for 12 weeks during the summer. We just had a wonderful extern uh, this summer. Uh, and then in general, the USPTO has lots of internships and externships throughout the year that you can take. Uh, next slide, please. Yes, I'm going to apply. That is excellent. I look forward to seeing your resume packages, your application packages. Okay. So next, I am going to talk about the trademark examining attorney's opportunities and how to apply. And hopefully you all can still see the slides. Okay, so the positions we are currently seeking to fill as the attorney advisor, law clerk, and the attorney advisor. The attorney advisor law clerk is at the GS9 grade level. The attorney advisor is the GS11. So the difference is the law clerk at the GS9 level is you have to be pending bar admission. admission. You um, should not have passed the bar at that time. The We do have a, an attorney advisor, which is at the GS11, which requires an active bar membership along with the um, JD or LLM. And then we have the attorney advisor, which is open to applicants who are returning to the USPTO, which is the GS 12, 13, and the 14. And as you can see, the level of years of experience that is required to um, um, qualify for that position, which is anyone who has the JD or LLM, degree or active bar member and have worked at PTO as a um, prior examining attorney. Next slide. The requirements, as I mentioned before, for all of the positions is a US citizen or national, uh, a JD or LLM from an accredited law school, uh, active bar membership from any state if applying for the GS 11 or higher, you must be registered for selective service if applicable and must be suitable for federal employment. Next slide. So how do you apply to become an examining attorney? All of our positions are announced on usajobs.gov. After creating your account, please set up the notifications for future job announcement using the word trademarks because every time we open a job, um, you will automatically get notified of um, op job openings with the PTO. So at this time, we will be looking to answer some of the questions that you have put in the chat. But prior to that, sorry about that, prior to that, I would like to um, inform you of the application process. After the job opportunity announcement closes, 
we have an 18 week timeline that begins the start of the job closing. So we have the first two weeks is the vacancy announcement opening period. The third week is when it closes. And on the fourth and fifth week, our office, which my office, which is the Office of Human Resources, we start determining qualifications. We review your packages that um, you've submitted through USA Jobs. We do in turn ask for, after we do our initial qualifications, we do ask you to complete or submit a writing sample, which is um, annotated in the vacancy announcement. So we give you five days for that. During the seventh to 12th week, we give the managers a certificate of eligibles for all who qualified for the position. And this is based on our initial screening. Then the 13th through the 16th week, the managers uh, begin the hiring process, which is the interview uh, process and schedule those with you. And lastly, the 17th and 18th week, um, selections are being made in addition to the actual um, reference checks. And then after that is completed, the hiring office returned the selection certificates, final selection certificates to us, and then we start making um, formal offers to you all. So again, I look forward to seeing your names come across um, as being selected. So now um, we will begin um, responding to some of the questions that you have um, put in the chat to us. All right, and anyone from the panel can, um, you know, respond to the questions. As a 3L student looking to secure a position as an examiner after passing the bar at this time, should I be applying for the law clerk position on your website or the examiner position? Anyone on the um, panel can respond to that question. Sandy, I can take that one or at least kick things off for the discussion purposes because this question, I, I think it's actually come up quite a few times in the chat during our uh, session today. Um, essentially, you know, in order to apply for that GS9 law clerk position, as Sandy mentioned just a couple of slides ago, one of the basic requirements is a JD or LLM degree. So. For those folks that have not graduated yet and are not slated to graduate before the vacancy announcement closes, um, unfortunately, that would be foreclosed. That possibility uh, would be foreclosed for you. However, if you, uh, I would suggest that you um, keep checking usajobs.gov. As Sandy mentioned, set up uh, an alert for any trademark related positions that come available. Um, because, you know, there will always be future opportunities. So when you, if it, you know, when you do graduate at a later time, be it whether at the end of this year or later on, keep an eye out to be notified of those types of positions. Um, any other panels want to weigh in on that question as well? You did great, David. Ah, I feel like I covered it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hopefully that answers a number of, of the questions that we got in the chat today. Sandy, what else do we have? We have, okay, are practicing attorneys three plus years with no trademark experience advised to apply for entry level or GS 12 through the 14 grade level? Yeah, unfortunately, you'll still have to apply for the GS 11 because those GS 12 uh, and up um, postings are for if you've been a, a, a trademark examining attorney in the past. Um, so it's limited. Okay. What skills are best suited for working at the USPTO? And we mentioned a couple of those during, during the career journeys. So anyone? I think we probably all have some thoughts. Um, <laughs> I'll start and say um, it's an independent job. Uh, I think it was mentioned a few times. So um, it, it's, you know, the ability to make decisions uh, by yourself, uh, be confident in your decision making, uh, research, make decisions. I think decisiveness is very important and um, independence is very important. 
Yeah, along with that, I would say good time management. And um, that is from someone who has very poor time management. Um, I'm a huge procrastinator usually. <laughs> but um, one of the things I liked about the job here was with the training, I knew what I had to do. So I didn't hesitate to jump in and do it and was really able to like even out my workflow and um, really manage my time. I manage my time much better at work than I do at home. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> They're in a work context. Um, but you need to be self-disciplined and have um, you know good time management skills so that um, you can get through applications in a timely fashion um, and just you know with consistency yeah that, that's a good point and real quickly just to follow up I, I want to make it clear to all of our, our participants today the examining attorney job is production based work we expect examining attorneys to process between eight to ten trademark applications on a daily basis and as I mentioned earlier in the presentation, you know, a lot of the issues are very, very similar. Those that come up are, are the same throughout the day and throughout uh, an examining attorney's week. Um, going back to Cameron's portrait quote, the ability to find the fun in every application, um, that is a skill that uh, would serve an examining attorney or anyone working at the PTO very, very well, being able to do that. Okay. All right, so the next question is, and we've got a lot of inquiries as to how many positions are being um, filled for these vacancy announcements. Uh, I think we are hiring quite a few, um, as many as we can. Essentially, I think a lot of people got creative during the pandemic and filed a lot of trademark applications for new new and interesting things. Um, so we will be hiring as many as we can. Great, great, great. Is it possible for new examiners to work from home as soon as they start? I am from New York and would like to work remotely as opposed to having to relocate. The answer is yes. Um, our training program is entirely virtual at this point, and so new examining attorneys that have been recently brought on board do work from home um, at their option. They are more than welcome to relocate if they'd like to, uh, to be nearer to our headquarters in Alexandria, Virginia, but at this time it is not required. Okay, great. Thank you for that. All right. So our next question, and we did receive a lot of questions. Um, our next question is, I am a law student graduating in May 2023, interested in trademark law. I learned of these openings from school as a post-grad opportunity, but I am unsure if the positions are open to current students. Do you know if graduating law students are eligible for the position? So unfortunately, no. For graduates May 2023, um, like we discussed before, in order to qualify for that baseline GS9 law clerk requirement, uh, the applicant must have uh, their degree by that point, by the time the vacancy closes. Um, as Sandy will discuss after the Q&A portion in just a few minutes, um, that vacancy announcement is open uh, not even through the end of this month, uh, November. So May 2023 graduates, I would say keep an eye out for future opportunities. Set up the alert on usajobs.gov for trademark positions. Okay, you mentioned working in multiple locations is outside the country allowed. My wife is looking at studying abroad for a semester, and I would like to be with her if possible. Unfortunately, not right now, but we did, didn't used to have uh, Alaska or Hawaii or Puerto Rico until recently, so I guess the future's bright, but no, not as of right now, it has to be in the United States. Oh, and Robin reminded me, um, or the District of Columbia, which is not a state, but should be recognized as such. <laughs> okay. And we have five more minutes before we can, um, we need to start wrapping up, but I will ask um, one more. Do you have any advice for answering the questions for the writing sample during the job application process? That's a great question. And I, I thank the person that asked it. Um, 
I would say this, pay very close attention to the questions that are asked on the writing sample. There are three of them, and it's very clear to us when we review trademark uh, applicant packages, who actually read the questions and who decided to kind of skip over uh, the content and just give us something that they wrote for some other purpose. Um, they're very easy to answer. Uh, they talk about your history in communicating uh, with various people in a legal setting. Uh, they ask about you know past trademark law experience, if any, or intellectual property experience. So my advice uh, would be to read the question carefully and respond you know as honestly as possible. Um, it's it's a very simple thing actually. Okay, thank you, thank you, everyone. So next, um, as we wrap up, these were some really great questions. Um, thank you all for attending, becoming a trademark examining attorney at the USPTO. We had a great time providing information about our open trademark attorney positions. Now that you have some information, it's time to take action. Please subscribe to alerts if you wish to uh, keep up with us and what we're doing and about the office, create your USPTO account and subscribe to the trademark alerts using that um, hyperlink there. And also watch the USA Jobs for future vacancy announcements. Next slide. So these are avenues to learn more about us, um, our website, um, about the examining attorney positions, becoming a trademark attorney. Um, and for students, we ask you to look at the student programs. And of course, we're all over the social media uh, platforms and channels that you see here. Next slide. So if you're ready to apply, by all means, our vacancy announcements are open until November the 28th. And you can use the QR link that you see and apply right now. And if you have any questions as you begin the application process, please do not hesitate to reach out to us at recruitment at USPTO.gov. And thank you all for joining us today. And thank you all to the panel members as well. <laughs>